All right, we wanted to have some fun. Um, we mentioned that today would be the initial ride, the first journey and foray into you got served. I love it. Okay, uh, go ahead and bring us in. This was uh, this was your brainchild. Tell, well, us, tell, us, tell us what we're doing. Here. I couldn't help but think about you and uh, you know the show, and I'm always thinking about fun things that we do. And I try to joke around a lot, and I try to get a reaction from you a lot. And one thing that you always react to is when I tell you <laughs> he got served because it. The way you say it, it cracks me up because well, anytime anybody, something goes against somebody, I'll say, oh, he got punked or he got clowned, and you'll get slightly annoyed with me, and you'll say, no, he got served. He got served. Well, the birth of this was the first time I ever had Stephen A. Smith on the radio. Right. Uh, give me the, Yep, give it to me. There it so, is. Oh, yeah. That, <laughs> I have Stephen A. on the radio, and the funny thing is, the way he talks, it makes the listeners think he just worked you. Oh, yeah. But he's not like, I'm like, we're not debating. Like, we're not fighting. Like, you'd ask him, hey, what, you know, I mean, Steph Curry, where do you put him on your all-time list, Stephen A? This is not, like, this is not argumentative. What do you, what, you want to tell me that Steph Curry, <laughs> and by the time he's done, he works, you be it, hey, he works himself up to a point where I just, every time I'd ask a question, like... Oh, he owned you. Right, on Twitter, <laughs> people were like, damn, Willard, you got served. I'm like, all I did was ask him a question. What are you, what are you talking about? So that leads us to this moment where right here on Willard and Dibs, we'd like to ask one another and you, uh, who got served? Y'all just mad, because today, you suckers got served. Sir. 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 Oh. That's my man, Lucas and Grandy on the wheels of steel. Good stuff, uh, boys. Oh, boy. Man, Real no, complex open. You went into the lab. <laughs> totally. And came up with that. So, I got served real quick. All time underrated movie, by the way. I'm going to have to watch it. I've no never doubt. seen it. Yeah. B2K, shout out. That's great. I've and never Lucas. seen it. That's, uh, wow. <laughs> I'm going to have to put that in my Netflix back when that was a thing. <laughs> Remember when you used to get movies from Netflix? Uh, that was like Netflix was they send you, you movies. Mean like when they would show up in the mail. That was Netflix. And, yeah, and you had to like tear the little piece of paper. My parents yes. were doing that until like six months ago. <laughs> Did you even parents. know that you could still do it? No. I don't think you can now, but like within six months ago. Mark the blockbuster clothes. Yeah. What was the little list that you had that that, that what did they there was a name for that? The like, queue? Yeah, the queue. That's Still what there, it was. just technically. Was it my queue? Yeah, whatever. Who's in my queue? Now you just go on Twitter and go, hey, people, what, what, what should I watch on Netflix? If you're so inclined and so sure. bored. But anyway. Your parents tried to go to the local blockbuster and it was closed. They got served. <laughs> Ellen and Tom, you got served. They get served every time they try to pick up their phone. I, I can't delete this text. How, Mark? How do I get this? Mark, I, I how do that. I get this text off of my <laughs> phone, Mom? I'll let me get a plane ticket. I'll come down and I'll show you. Uh, but anyway, uh, point being, all right, three events this weekend. Oh, so good. Where people got served. Who got served the most? Yeah, triple eight nine five seven ninety five seventy. We're gonna put up a poll on Twitter too, so you can vote to see who got served the most. Your first candidate. Mark comes from Canada. Oh, Canada. And I don't know if how much of this you were watching, but I, I, the PGA Tour Canadian Open was a wild, wild event. Nick Taylor, the Canadian, trying to be the first Canadian to win in more than 60 years. Tommy Fleetwood had a chance to birdie the easy 18th hole and prevent a playoff, but no. We go to a playoff, fourth playoff hole. Nick Taylor, the Canadian, drains a 72-foot bomb ski to win it, and Adam Hadwin, his countryman, is so excited <laughs> that he runs out to give Nick Taylor a champagne spray celebration, and he gets about five feet away from Taylor, and here comes security <laughs> off the top rope. Hadwin gets absolutely smoked uh -huh. like he was a fan interloper in an MLB field in short left field, Hadwin goes flying to the ground, and it takes security a minute to realize 
This is not just yeah. some average this is, fan. This is not a fan. This is Adam field. Hadwin. I just wanted Kevin Harlan, and maybe we could get him the videotape and let him. This is tailor made. Perfect. Sorry for the golf He's reference. He's drunk at the 15. Oh my gosh! Here comes Hadwin. He's on the 18th, <laughs> and down he goes for a loss of five yards. So good. Oh my gosh! It was hilarious to watch that guy uh, get uh, get tackled the way he did, and he handled it like a champ. Because I think he understood. He's like, yeah, dude, I just ran after the guy who won the golf tournament. I probably look like a crazed <laughs> fan with a bottle of champagne. And uh, and down he goes. But he got up and took all the necessary photos for social media afterward. And everything was fine. And good tackling for him by the security guard oh, as well. Oh, yeah. Bottom line, though, Adam, you got served. Got served. And then the USGA served him again. It's U.S. Open week. And they posted this in his locker. I don't know if you saw this, but they put a bright yellow vest in his locker with a note saying, Adam, glad you're feeling better and made the trip. Your safety and security are our utmost priority. We're here to support you and ensure your well-being. Mm. So they gave him a special yellow vest to wear so that security knows not to tackle him. Um, Okay, so that was one. And it seemed like Hadwin uh, handled the injuries like a champ. And all was good. I don't know if we can say the same for what happened with Conor McGregor. Oh, man. NBA Finals, Dateline, Miami. And, you know, these old bits where you've got, like, the timeout or in between quarters. So they're doing a bit where Conor McGregor, former MMA star, kind of a bad dude, quite frankly, is going to come out and fight the Miami Heat mascot. And so they get into it. And you see the mascot hamming it up, hamming it up. McGregor comes in. (laughs) Pop, pop. Hits him with the two-piece. First, he hits him once, and the mascot goes down, right? It's part of the bit. Right. Although, it, my first thought was, he kind of hit that mascot pretty hard. Then, McGregor, seeing the mascots down, comes in with the overhand, ha, hammer fist. Turns out the mascot needed medical attention, Mark. Totally, yeah. It's completely laid out, and not anybody in the building would realize it because it looks like the bit. Right? How do you punch right. a mascot and actually punch the mascot? It looks like you're probably just punching foam, right? Like a big head that's on this human being. So it looked like great acting that the mascot went down. But the mascot did not get up. And the whole thing looked like a performance while other stadium personnel, the other people on the floor, go over and kind of carry the mascot off. And it was like, yeah, that's hilarious, right? Bernie, God, by the like, way, is his name. Bernie, because the heat, you get dude, it? Dude, Bernie. It completely weekend at Bernie's. Didn't go very well. Oh. Yeah. It's the second punch it's that gets so me. It's so bad. Because the so first bad. one, oh, yeah, you go down as part of the bit. And then McGregor steps up with the overhand left. Um, Miami Heat, you said his name is Bernie? Bernie. Bernie. You got served. You <laughs> got served. All right. And then. And, well, just real quick. Yeah. He went to the hospital for treatment, at which point he was helped by the medical personnel. He was served there, too. He was served. Oh, yes. In the right way. Exactly. <laughs> they served his needs. <laughs> they did. And probably some ice cream after the whole thing. Totally. All right. And then the last one comes to us uh, via WFAN. Uh, at the end of a Yankees uh, baseball game. Now the 3 2 swung on, a pop foul back here. Ow! 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 It really hit me. I didn't know it was coming back that far. So once again, it'll be a 3 2. <laughs> <laughs> it really why hit me. It, why is it still funny? I've watched it 47 times. And every time he says, ow, it's... T- I really do wonder where the cutoff point is that it, it. the more we hear it, I feel like it gets funnier. Like, should we just now keep the playing? 3-2 swung on, a pop foul back here. Ow! <laughs> ow! Ow! It really hit me. I didn't know it was coming back that far. <laughs> So once again, it'll be a 3-2. That's WFAN with the call. It's Part of it is the sound effects. It's that you can hear the ball contact the table and the microphone and then his face because there's so many microphones around. That's part of what makes it. <laughs> and it's also it the way he says, there's a foul ball back here. Ow. And then, ow! It's like y- y- the call was perfect. There's a foul ball back here. And then he doesn't realize that it really is back oh here, gosh. like in your face, oh, John. Well, all the famous home run calls that have gone awry in the last two years 
I feel like we finally figured out what's wrong with John. He gives up on fly balls. <laughs> That's what it is. He he gives up on him. The ball goes into the air, and I don't know if his neck, right, he's 84, and it just doesn't go back that high anymore. He don't want to look up. Once it leaves his visual scope, that's it. He thinks it's gone. Right. But caught. <laughs> like, John, the ball comes down once it goes up. Sometimes it comes down into people's gloves. Sometimes it comes down on you. Now the 3 2 swung on, a pop foul back here. Ow! <laughs> Ow! It really hit me. I didn't know it was coming back that far. So once again, it'll be a 3-2. Oh, my gosh. And he toughs it out, what though. What a treasure. Seriously. I love that he felt like he needed to tell everybody it wasn't a bit. I'm like, what is this, Dan Dibley? Like, you think <laughs> he thought that saying ow three times, then he had to be like, no, it really did. It really hit me. It really hit me. And the count is 3-2. and two. I, I mean, oh, my gosh, it's the best. It's the moment of the weekend. So uh, the ball to John Sterling, you got served. You got served. You got served. The baseball wins. I encourage each and every one of you, if you've not seen the video, please go watch it, not even just for the ball, but also because when the game does end, John Sterling, when he does his famous call, does the shimmy with his arms and his shoulders. Yeah. Like two fists, and they're up. YouTube, you see us. I mean, ah, yeah, he looks like he's at a wedding, and and the dance has broken. The dance floor is open. It is hysterical from all fronts. Uh, I'm voting on Bernie the Heat mascot, though. Um, the other two things looked like they all ended in a whole lot of fun, and the Miami Heat situation ended at the hospital. I'm so, going to go with Adam Hadwin, okay. uh, the Canadian, because not only because of the fact that he gets absolutely smoked. And I was just looking at a still photo. You see the security guard when he's one step away. He means business. He's an intimidation he, sensation. That's a buck. He is. He's not playing he around with. Oh, I'm going to make. I'm just going to. I'm going to cradle you. you. He has his eyes on the center of Hadwin's chest. He's going to knock him out. No, he did a great fundamental play. Out it's of the a green. great tackle. Yeah, he took him down. And the reason why I think Hadwin got served the most, because in typical Canadian fashion, he apologizes to the security guy well, after the fact. Well, he should have let him know that he was going to come flying out there on the green. And again, he had no idea that his buddy was going to make a 72-foot putt. Right, but if that's an American golfer of the same ilk, we've got ourselves a lawsuit. And we're already we're gonna lawyer up, and we're not necessarily. Maybe, maybe we're not all like that, dude. If it was me, I would have called Ann Fong by now, <laughs> or one eight hundred eight know million, what? or whatever I, number. I, I wonder. I wonder if they would you even have a case. I mean, you run out there on the green. Security's job is to protect the athletes, right? But he didn't have, and I didn't see him having a lanyard on either. Right. To where some security, crazy yeah. comes out with a bottle of champagne. I, the security guard was doing his job. Did a great job, too. Did a great job. Very clean hit. <laughs> clean hit. And if it, unfortunately, if that was an NFL hit, 15 yards, body weight. Oh, absolutely. Because he, 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 I think he finished with some body drive. weight. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he did. He forced him into the ground. Easy 15. Yeah, especially if, uh, Especially if he was a quarterback. If he was a quarterback, they'd have ejected that totally. security guard.